wife tells me I need to talk about safety at the beginning of this video because she thinks people might do something unsafe and try to blame me. Let me make this perfectly clear. You are responsible for your own safety. You always have been, you always will be. So let's not do anything stupid here. If you build one of these, I'm not responsible for what you do or how you hurt yourself. Also, if you're too stupid to know, you shouldn't stick your hand in something that looks like that when it's spinning at 1700 RPM. You shouldn't build one of these things, and you should stay the hell away from it. You should probably keep kids away from it too, because kids do stupid things. Teenagers do stupid things too. For that matter, a lot of people do stupid things. So, if you're working with people who do stupid things, put more guards on it or keep them away from it. You should put more guards on it anyway. You might be wondering why someone might build such a contraption. So let's say you're driving down the road, minding your own business, and you look up and you see an apple tree. So you pull over to admire the apple tree, and the person who owns the tree just happens to come out. So you talk to them, and you say, hey, mind if I pick a few apples? And they say, I'd prefer you pick them all. So you say, I can do that. And you come back the next day and you pick the tree. Well, that gives you two, three, four hundred pounds of apples. Maybe even as many as six hundred pounds of apples. Then the owner says, hey, I got another one in the back. You want to pick that too? Well, there's another six hundred pounds of apples. Then you spot another one. Like that one. Again, the owner says, please take them all. So you do that too. Apple tree owners are often more than happy to have you come and take all their apples away. And this happens over and over and over and over again. And pretty soon you have 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 pounds of apples. And you got to figure out what to do with them before they go bad. You could try using a garbage disposal, but they suck. They're expensive. You have to quarter the apples, and they grind up the seeds. And they keep blowing the breakers. So that's not really an option. You could use a Harbor Freight Chipper Shredder. But that's over $100, and you still have to quarter the apples. A traditional apple scatter can handle large amounts and full-size apples, but they tend to be very slow, and they tend to be expensive. There's a few other options that are either expensive or slow, or both, but for the most part, you get your choice. Slow or expensive. My apple chopper solves most of those problems. It can take full-size apples, and it's fairly cheap by comparison. And it's very, very fast, which is the most important thing. This is over 100 pounds of apples. So I'll show you how fast this chopper can handle them. Some of these apples are as big as softballs. And they don't have to be quartered or cord or anything taken out of them you just have to shove them in the chopper and let it chop
Try that with a Harbor Freight chipper shredder. <laughs> and the 100 pounds of apples now looks like this. Time to take it to the press. I know some of you had to have noticed this little bit here. Um, that's a little problem I had because I overfilled the buckets. I don't normally run into a bucket. I run into a chute that then runs down into a, a collection tub. But this year I just don't have the ability to do that so it's inside a shop. So I have a skirt on there, and as you can see, it's black plastic. So I can't see when the bucket's full. But normally, that's not a problem because it just goes into the chute. But if I had a clear skirt on there, I could see when the bucket was full. But I lost about five pounds of apples. It's no big deal when you're doing several hundred pounds. But you know, for a small amount, it could matter. My well, press is pretty basic. It's just a press. Stainless steel drip pan with a hole drilled in it. And a wooden slat set up for drainage on the bottom. You might notice I have bags lining the buckets. That's what I press in. is bags that are just homemade bags. They're a lot like pillowcases. Pretty fine weave actually. A lot of people think you can't you can't uh, press with a fine weave, but I've never had a problem with it. And it lets me get a finer chop. There's a bag set on the bottom set of slats. Um, I don't put any, any slats between the bags. I've just not found it necessary. A lot of people think it is, but it's never made a difference on my pressings. For pressing, I just set the second bag on top of the first. If there's a third bag, it goes on top of the second. And then I put a big old slap board on top of that, like this. A big old slap board on top of that. You see, without any weight on it, it's already running into the bucket. I've already got over a gallon in that bucket. Then I place a piece on there to distribute the weight. Usually I use wood, but this time metal was handy, so I used metal. Crank the press down. And start gently pumping the pressure on. It does not take a lot of pressure. Take very, very little pressure. There's how much pressure I have on. And that's it. No more. Some people notice that the bags seem to bulge, which they do, but that doesn't seem to make much of a difference either. Um, I'll later fold the bags in half and press a second time to get that last little bit. First pressing is done. I got about six gallons of apple juice out of that. The bags look like this at this point. What I'm going to do next is fold them in half and put them back in the press and repress them. Bags have now been folded in half as you can see. And all I got to do is put the press plates back on and continue pressing. This is the same thing as before, just pump some pressure on it. See the juice starting to come out. And 
that's it. Just let it run out. You can see I'm still under 50 pounds of pressure on the uh, hydraulics for the jack, so hardly any pressure at all. And when all the pressing is over, the press bag looks about like that. There's about three inches there. After we're done pressing, the press bags look like this. And what's inside of them looks like this. What's inside of them looks like that. A nice compressed pumice. When all said and done, I have about seven gallons of apple juice from a hundred pounds of apples. We can drink it now as sweet cider, or if we add some yeast in a couple of months, we can have some nice hard cider. Now it's time to sit back. Relax and enjoy the fruits of our labor.